Dr. Tack Mack. You've been looking at the Warburg effect, and it, it's apparently relevant. It was discovered so many years ago, but it's relevant to some of the mechanisms that we have in the cancer cell about mobility, synthesis, proliferation, and so on. Could you explain what you've been doing? Well, I think the cold realization that we now know there are 18,000 out of the 22,000 genes can be mutated in cancer. And uh, every cancer is perhaps different from another cancer in the history of developing, at least for a solid tumor. So the, the, the original paradigm of shooting the horses to stop the cart makes it very difficult to think that there will be enough bullets to shoot the 18,000 different horses. Can you explain what is the Warburg effect for those of us who aren't fully familiar with it and how you might harness this to stop right. cancer in the future? So, so in view of the almost um, diversity of, of the different mutations, many of them are lost to functions, we start thinking about what are the consequences of all these mutations and can we harness those properties to try to target cancer. And one of which was actually originally observed in 1928 by Otto Warburg in Germany, and which he re went on to receive the Nobel Prize 1931, but we have soon forgotten about what he observed. What he observed was that cancer cells, even in the presence of oxygen, prefers to use glycolysis. In other words, it takes the glucose down to pyruvate. And what usually that does is they harness two ATPs. But now you take the pyruvate and convert it to acetyl-CoA and goes into the Krebs cycle. That gives you 32 ATPs. But the cancer cells, for some reason, decided not to be greedy, even though they are hungry for energy, to only concentrate on the glycolysis. And the question is why? Well, uh, let me put that question to you. Why, why does that happen? And of course, how might it help cancer doctors in the future? Well, I think it is imperative for us to start thinking about the, 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 what I would call the lost paradigm of targeting oncogenes for the last 30 years because there are too many oncogenes, they're too redundant, and every patient has a different set of oncogenes. You know, we've pretty much done what we can do. You can see the last two years, FDA in the U.S. has not approved a single novel agent. So that means we must be running out of ideas about targeting oncogenes. So basically the fact that there's an oncogene involved and you simply target it uh, to, to switch it off or, or on and then you may treat cancer, that's a naive concept, is it? <sighs> that is mostly a naive concept now. I mean, I think it's pretty much done what it can do. Uh, there may be a few small victories, but the overall picture of, for example, I mean, uh, targeting EGFR was probably the most sensational discovery. And even at its best, we're talking about three months per patient extended life. Mm. So now, how do you think that the Warburg effect could in fact be harnessed to give us perhaps more than that or, or even more progress in treating cancer in the future? Well, to begin with, uh, all these oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes that are mutated it doesn't really matter. At the end, it changes the metabolism because the cancer cells needs more energy, it needs more building blocks, and needs to put out the fire, the reactive oxygen, that is a consequence of the cancer state. And, if we, and since these three are basically the same in every cancer cell, then, for example, NADPH. There are only three ways our cells can make NADPH, whether we are yeast, we are man, or we're crocodile. So instead of the hundreds and thousands of oncogenes, we're down to very, very specific limited pathways. So in, in other words, we can cut to the chase and go for the thing that's going wrong. What is that? 
and, and how do we do that practically? Well, make sure they don't have enough energy, make sure they do not have the achilleal heels of certain building blocks, and in some cases, let the reactive oxygen burn the cell down, kill it. So are there molecular pathways that can be targeted, a small number of pathways that help clarify the whole situation then? Well, one absolutely amazing mutation that has been found recently is a mutation called isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now, this is converts isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. This enzyme is mutated in 80% of all gliomas and secondary glioblastomas, 30% in all acute myeloblastic leukemias. This is not an oncogene. This is converting isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. It, that mutation is and can cause cancer. Isn't that amazing? Can you summarize then, just in a few words, what can come out of this and what cancer doctors might be able to take We have home? to reverse the Warburg effect so that the, the, the cancer cells cannot siphon off the metabolites of glucose for building blocks and for reducing agents. I think that is not a bad start. And, and do you think there are some clues to doing this very, very briefly now yes, there among are the research you've been doing? There are big clues because there is cancer cells use a different form of pyruvate kinase. So you can target that? Yeah. You can target that. And by targeting that, it switches cancer cells back to pyruvate kinase 1, which is what normal cells use. But cancer cells use pyruvate kinase 2. And so... You can target that. So how hopeful are you then, very, very briefly, that some new steps forward will be made which are a little bit bigger than the ones we've been doing so far with, with um, directed molecularly directed therapies using other mechanisms? I don't want to be recklessly optimistic because we all know that cancer has taken 20, 30 years to be where they are, and they are as clever as any bacteria that you can think of. But at the same time, the sooner we realize that targeting oncogenes has very limited future because of the number of mutations that we can find, we start looking other ways. So the metabolism is a better target? It certainly is worth revisiting. Dr. Takmak, it's great having you with us here in Orlando for the American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting. Thanks for joining eCancer Television. You're welcome.